Hey guys, Mechanic CG here and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport. Today's episode number 15. If you guys do enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. Alright, so this is going to be our last um, event, should we say, of the recording session today. So we've got the ultra lightweights. Uh, we're starting off Tokyo Circuit, Alpine Ring, uh, Blue Mountain Raceway, Rio de Janeiro. And then we're actually getting our first look uh, in this walkthrough on... Uh, sorry, playthrough of uh, Test Track Infield, which is actually pretty sick. So let's get started. All right, we are here at the front of the grid. Let's do this. Race number one of five. The bullet's gone. I don't know why, I really like the look of the Vauxhall VX220. But I have not seen a Vauxhall VX220 ever in my life. I've never seen one on the road. Like, were they really that uncommon? Like, I know Vauxhall was, is very well known for the Zephira. Like, come on. That's like the only car you really see. That or the fucking Astra. Or Corsa. There's like three common cars. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. It's Opal. No, it's a Vauxhall. In the UK, it's a Vauxhall. In majority of other countries, it's Opal. And I think in... Um, is it Australia? They change it to Holden? Is it Holden in Australia? Ah, fine, Opal. I'm calling it a fucking Vauxhall when the badge has a Vauxhall on it, though. Same as the Acura. The Acura is technically a fucking Honda. <laughs> I'm gonna still call it an Acura if it's got an Acura badge on it. Unless it comes to the Supra. In which case, if it's a new Supra, I'm calling it a BMW, whether you like it or not. Meow. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I've hit the wall, I've hit the wall. And the wall hit me back. Slapped me in the face. Touched me on my bum hole. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I love how this game, they actually animated reflections on the cars. But what's really weird is this game is the only game out of all of the Forza games where the frame rate of the reflections are not the same as the frame rate of the rest of the game. So uh, the, the frame rate on this for the reflections is like... <laughs> five frames a second. <laughs> so you notice as you're going down there, you've got like 25 frames a second game in. Because this runs at half 50. Because the output resolution of the Xbox was 50 hertz. So this runs at half that. And then the reflections are just... <laughs> the slideshow. Let's go. I love how one of these songs in this album is literally called I Was Once Maybe Possibly a Cowboy King. It's such a good name for a song. It's like, hmm, I've forgotten what to call songs, so uh, that's what we're going to call this one. All right, no worries. No worries, Sober. See you in a bit. We're also going to be playing some more Falls of Motorsport tomorrow on stream, so um, just so we can get some extra footage. Um, because I want a bit of an excess. So that I don't run out of stuff. 
Um, so feel free to uh, join stream same time tomorrow. We'll be uh, streaming probably the same amount of time. Um, and then when it comes to Saturday, we're going to play some Fallout 4. Because I really want to play some more Fallout 4. I've been holding it off for about a year now. Well, I finished Fallout 4 my last playthrough about a year ago on the PS PS5. But I really want to play it again. And I've been holding off playing it on PC for about six months. I've owned it on PC for more than six months now. I've been holding it off this entire time. And I'm just like, fuck it, I can't wait anymore. I'm playing the game again. <laughs> they said this could never happen. <laughs> Fucking emo death screams. Yeah, welcome back, Epic. That was a very short five minutes to reset your PC. That was not even two. <laughs> To make you smile, I was right to make you shine. Oh, yo, DH Aaron, welcome back. Oh, sorry, Aaron. I keep saying the DH. I always, if I make a nickname for someone in chat, I'll always use the first part of their username. Because it just makes the most sense. Because shortening it down. Keep the start bit. That's sort of logical. So I always go like DH. Ah. Uh, it's just Aaron. But I've already read the start bit. <laughs> Needed an update. And I had an estimated time of four minutes. To be honest. Windows doesn't need an update. Every so often. People are like. Update your Windows when it says. You'll, you'll be. Nah. No one is hacking your ass. Let's be honest. Unless you're Elon Musk, in which case, yes, I would tell him to... If there's a Windows vulnerability update, fucking update straight away. But then, to be fair, I think Elon Musk has got his own software that fucks people's computers up if they try and fuck his up. No, in Elon. <laughs> it wouldn't let me restart it. That's strange. Windows equals confusion. This is over. Oh, me. Back to, to be here. Love. Fair enough. Sometimes Windows will do that if you haven't updated your PC in over like a month. But most of the time, my computer always says, Oh, do you want to update now or later if ever I'm shutting down my PC I always just press update and shut down because then it just does it and it's dealt with but if I'm restarting I will always just restart I will never update and restart uh, right there we go 20 grand not bad we're getting into the big monies now all right we're here at um, Alpine ring now let's get this done yeah it's not the same story with piracy. See, piracy is one of those loopholes that some people... Obviously, piracy in itself is... I think it's illegal unless um, the software is classed as abandoned. I think piracy is still classed as illegal. Here's the thing, though. On an ethical standpoint... As if my opinion, obviously different people have different opinions on piracy. And my opinions on piracy are if the software is not available for purchase and you cannot physically buy it anywhere on a main storefront that offers the product to you, then piracy is all right. That includes if, say for example, there was a game like Colin McRae Dirt 2, which isn't available in the stores, but there are keys for sale. I still think that is a justified reason for pirating those games because of the fact that the game isn't publicly available to purchase 
legally. You have to obtain a key, which can be sold for ridiculous prices, and therefore it, it cannot be obtained just by purchasing it. And at that point, no one's gaining anyway. Steam doesn't gain from those purchases. Nobody gains anything. And therefore, piracy's all right. I think if, if nobody is gaining from it or losing anything, are you a, a, a pirate? See, here's the thing. The majority of my games aren't pirated. Um, I obviously will buy disc versions of all my games so that I have a license and so I'm covered on majority of legal grounds anyways. The thing is, you don't want to... If, if you don't own the software at all... Like, I've got three copies of Dirt 2. So, if I was to pirate a copy of Dirt 2... Because my PC version had broken... Because the disc stopped working... I wouldn't care. And I'm pretty sure a majority of the community and people will not care either. Because it's... At the end of the day... I own a copy of the game anyways own a physical copy it's just stopped working hey we got shadow friend here what up um and again i think that that is also a justified reason for piracy if you've bought a copy of a game and for whatever reason the game is not allowing you to play it then yeah that's you should be allowed to use your software that you have purchased so yeah pirate it um it's the same with any PS1 game. None of the PS... Unless you're... If, if you think about Spyro Trilogy on PS1, don't pirate that. Because there is a version of it available on um, PC. There is a version of it available on modern generation consoles. And I think, yeah, you should have to buy that game. But if, if a game is, again, not legally available... For any means, then it should be legal to pirate it. And obviously, game developers are gonna say, "Oh well, that's that's not fair. That's not fair." Like, game developers will fight corners to try and make sure that piracy doesn't exist. But at the end of the day, if you're gonna produce a product and then make it unplayable in the future, fuck you, game developers. End of argument. It's sort of more a dig... That, that's more a dig of, at companies like Ubisoft and... Eh, sometimes Codemasters, when they delist it. EA, big time. Because when you think about it... Right. Drive to San Francisco, one of the best Ubisoft games that has ever existed. Let's be honest. You can't buy it anymore. You can't buy it. So at that point, pirate the game. I don't care. No one cares. Because Ubisoft isn't benefiting from it. They're not benefiting by you paying for a game that you can't actually even pay them for, right? Pirate it. Go on. If you're thinking of pirating GTA V, no. Because that game can be legally bought. You're just a dumbass for doing that. Guess I'm a dumbass then. You are. <laughs> no, but at the, at the end of the day, like, obviously, I can't tell you, oh, do this, don't do that. But, obviously, if, if a game can be legally obtained, you should legally obtain it. Rather than doing the illegal methods. But if, if you can't get a game, if it's not available, like, I will buy a copy of a game on PS2... Right, and then I'll rip the disc onto my PC. <laughs> I mean, you can. It's up to me if I listen. Fair shout. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy a game on PS2, rip the disc on onto a uh, disc drive, and then I'll play the game on PC. I own the copy of the game. I should be able to play the software. And it's sort of... Um, it is a legal rabbit hole that you can go down with it. 
but the thing is, as, as long as you realize the effects of what you're pirating and what that can do, you can make your own judgments that way then. And again, strong believer, if a game is not available, if I can't pay the developers for their work, I'm not going to pay them. Simple as. If I can pay them, I will pay them. Because they deserve it. Unless you're Rockstar. <laughs> that is a joke. Fly me, fly. You can't lie your way out of this one. There we go. Not bad. You can't lie your way out of this one. Not bad. 733. I'm going to save that replay. That's a pretty cool one. 20 grand. Not bad. All right, we're here at uh, Blue Mountains. I fucking hate this track. With a passion. What's the time? Oh my god. It's fucking 10 o'clock. Fuck. Ba -da -ba -da -bum -bum. Ba -da -da hmm. I know how, like, computers work and shit like that. I'm just not very good at, like, actually building them. And putting that into practice. Because, technically speaking, I've never built a PC before, so. But. Hmm. Like, yeah, piracy is a, a big question mark. But, at the end of the day, if... By you pirating a game, no one is affected anyways. By all means, fucking do it. I don't care. I don't think anyone else will care. Like, the thing is... If... Here's the thing. I can buy... A copy of... A disc version of majority of games. But there are some games... For PC, and a majority of the piracy will happen on PC because PC gaming was only on disc for a very short time. And if it was on disc, because they did some sketchy copy protection really sketchy copy protection. Whereas consoles, their copy protection was just straightforward, didn't affect the systems or anything like that. And because of the sketchy copy. Uh, protection that they have on PC. Like, some of them were intrusive as hell. Some of them just don't work anymore. Like, it's ridiculous. You think, um... What is it? Test Drive Unlimited does not run on PC without a patch. Because the sec uh, Securom the actual, um, what's it called? Software that secures the discs fucking does not work anymore. So you can't play Test Drive Unlimited 1 on PC without breaking the game. It's the same thing with a lot of games out there nowadays as well. Fallout 4, oh my god. Uh, not Fallout 4, Fallout 3. Do you want to know something funny? Fallout 3, right, games for Windows Live. We're going to talk about games for Windows Live. Does not work, right? Games for Windows Live has been broken for years, okay? To the point you couldn't use it. So if you ran a game with games for Windows Live, you had to install the latest version of games for Windows Live. And if you didn't have the latest version, you could only run games up to that latest version. And what's even worse is you couldn't even use a disc version of a game that had games for Windows Live with it to then run said game because games for Windows Live still wouldn't work properly. You needed a full installation. 
So, obviously, some websites have archived uh, games for Windows Live. You can download it. And once you download it, you can play Fallout 3 and stuff like that. But the problem is... It's... The fact is, not many games, the developers actually took out the functionality. And it took Bethesda until, I think it was October or November 2021 to actually remove the necessity to run games for Windows Live on PC. I think New Vegas had it removed a while ago as well. That it was runnable. But on PC, uh, Fallout 3 was unplayable. Unless you patched the game and hacked the game. Because there wasn't an official patch for it. You'd have to put an unofficial patch. And uh, when I tried to do the unofficial patch, it never worked. So Fallout 3 was unplayable for me. It is fucked. It is big fucked. But at the end of the day... <laughs> but there's the sort of no incentive of uh, changing it. And then when enough people were like, man, this Windows, Games for Windows Live shit is ridiculous. And when people were like pirating the game, because then that got past the Games for Windows Live and all that stuff. When people were pirating it, pirating it enough, it was like, well, what do we do? And I think Microsoft actually stepped in. Because obviously Microsoft then owned Bethesda and they were like, well... This is a game that requires a Microsoft service that doesn't exist anymore. We should probably remove it. <laughs> and they removed games for Windows Live support. But it took them that fucking long to do it. It was ridiculous. First app I hacked on a phone was a Google Play Store onto a Kindle Fire. Oh yeah, because the Google Play Store is not on Kindle devices, is it? No, that's actually a really smart idea. Because, again, it's your device. If you want to download stuff off the Google Play Store, you should be allowed. That's why I hate Apple at the moment, right? Because here's the thing. Google lets you ins download and sideload APK files, right? Although you have to go into, like, dev mode and enable it, you can download whatever you want to your Android phone. Google doesn't care. The only difference is what they allow on the store is only stuff that they approve. That's understandable. So if you want a sketchy app, you just download it straight from the website and then run the APK like that. And you get your game, whatever you want to call it. Whatever it is. Yeah, you have to jailbreak to get shit on Apple. Here's the thing though. Apple's own... The fact is you don't have to do a jailbreak to do that on a Android phone. Android lets you download whatever you want and use your phone as your phone. Apple, on the other hand, they use this false premise of privacy, right? They'll say, oh, it makes your phone secure. It keeps your privacy and stuff like that. But here's the thing. Apple gave user data to random hackers posing to be law enforcement. Apple gave your user data out and they still preach about privacy. I'm sorry. That's dumb. <laughs> Oh, uh, we got level 26. We got modified club sport, turbo, and supercharger systems are 15% off. Not bad. Rio. Rio. Here you go. Flying over cities down to Rio. It's real. Love that. I feel. But nothing lasts forever, but I'm down for the minute, so just chill. That's a tune. But yeah, I just, I just find it insane, right? Apple will go round... They'll say, oh, we're keeping your devices safe. We're keeping them secure. That's why we're not allowing sideloading of apps. But then they hand over people's data just like that. No questions asked. Like, I really think they're just such a scummy company. Like, at this point, their excuse of privacy and security goes out the window. As soon as that data breach was found, that they... Gave away user data. Just gave them. Just said, here's the user data. You're welcome. As soon as they did that, no checks on it. Privacy's out the window. I don't care what you say. That can't be an excuse for why you're doing it. So what's the other excuse? Well, the only excuse that's 
logical is the fact that they then won't be able to tax their 30%. Right. Which at the end of the day, Apple makes so much money off their devices anyways, they charge a phone where the parts in it can't come to any more than close than 500 quid. Not even. And they charge that phone for 1,500. Apple's making enough product uh, profits off of product sales. They can make their profits there and not worry about the app store. Or if they want the app store to be that closed off, start selling your iPhones at 500 pounds. Make them competitive. Make people buy them and then you can have your app store how you want. Because people are spending a shit ton of money on a phone and not even being allowed to use said phone. It's why I don't go Apple. And anyone who says, oh, Apple is the best. It's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to suck Tim Cook's dick <laughs> at the end of the day. Like, if I was given a free iPhone, then sure. It's a free phone. Who wouldn't take a free phone? But... At the end of the day, I'm not spending my hard-earned money on an iPhone if I can't use it. If Apple was to go around and say, here, here's a free phone, take it. I'd be like, cheers. I'll use it for two years. When it starts getting slow and old, go to a new one. But I'll be going straight back to Android until Apple eventually changes how Apple is. The hell is this? This is Bring Me the Horizon. Ugh. This is horrible. Ugh. This isn't even good. Much better. I'm sorry. Anyone who listens to Bring Me the Horizon, it's, it's not great. Oh yeah, the Quest 2 was a steal. 300 quid for a VR headset is brilliant, brilliantly priced for today's stuff. Especially as it's, in theory, the best VR headset beside the Valve Index. But the Valve Index is £920. Also, Quest 2 isn't jailbroken. That's a thing. Quest has an option. Um, oh yeah, they're losing money. Quest allows people to sideload apps. They allow people to use the headset. They, You can turn on a developer mode as long as you've got a developer account. You can sideload apps, no questions asked. So, yes. Technically, it's, but it's not jailbreaking. It's not hacking into a phone to allow full access to your device. Because you're offered the chance to for full access to devices, the device anyways. You're offered full access to a Quest 2. See, I can imagine Windows running off of that would probably be pretty shit. <laughs> but if someone gets it running, good. I'm just waiting for the can it run Doom video. Running Doom on the Quest 2. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> Aaron just <laughs> pops in with that. Agree. Oh my god, this has been an awesome stream, by the way, chat. Let's hope that the videos do just as well on YouTube as well. <laughs> that would be awesome. Because what's funny is actually, um, if I time it right, I'll be publishing the videos at 4pm. Videos will all be finished by half four, five-ish. 
Aaron says he's awesome. Lovely. <laughs> Videos will be finished by half four, 5 p.m. I'll then have dinner. I will be streaming at six. So technically speaking, people from YouTube, an hour, hour and a bit after watching the Forza video, can come over and watch Forza live as long as Forza is on that day. If Falls is not on that day, they can ask, and I'll say, Falls is on this day, <laughs> or that day. Or if you're watching this in three years' time, Falls is finished. <laughs> <laughs> Running Doom on the Apollo Guidance computer, Jesus Christ. Alright, 19 grand. Let's move on to this final race. Okay, test drive circuit. Uh, we got eight minutes... Uh, about eight to nine minutes in this race, so. And I'm going to instantly start this off by ranting. School computers are fucking shit. <laughs> so, um, I don't know why schools are doing it at the moment. But a majority of schools are moving to Chromebooks. Yeah, and Aaron has just confirmed that. Chromebooks. I'm going to be honest with you. Linux doesn't have as much as you realize. <laughs> Linux is a lot more difficult to work with than Windows. Windows is used in many businesses. Businesses are not going to be moving from Windows to Linux for a long time. Like, here's the thing. A lot of businesses are still running old Windows technology from... 2005 right and if they're upgrading they're upgrading to the next version not a chance in hell are they are any IT technicians right the thing is businesses are not going to hire IT technicians if they're not experiencing Windows because that's what everyone is running at the moment but here's the thing a lot of people are being trained on Linux but people are not going to get hired right we're going to hire Windows people and those Windows people are going to stick with Windows because it's the better operating system. Yeah. See, I... The thing is, it's also the same when schools tell you you've got to buy an Apple, Apple MacBook. And it's like, no, you don't have to buy an Apple MacBook. Like, Linux is good for making custom operating systems for yourself. But here's the thing. It's custom. It's tailored to a certain use case, right? And although that is better, the thing is, when it comes to businesses, businesses, every version of Linux is different. So if you teach someone on Chrome OS, not a chance in hell are they going to be able to use a different type of Linux and be 100% confident with it. Whereas, if I go to a business place, right, and it runs Windows, I know how to use that computer. I may not know how to use the software on there, and I've got to be trained on it, but I know how to use a computer. I know how logging on works. I know if I need to go away from the computer, Windows L, that will lock my computer. And that's a habit I do all the time. I will, if I walk away from my computer, obviously not my personal computer, but if any time I was at work, college, win Windows L, straight away. Always. You should always do that. The thing is, you're never going to learn. Obviously, Chromebook is just a phone with a keyboard. And that's the thing. The Chromebooks, they're not great either. The performance on them aren't good enough. Granted, Windows 11 is a bit crap at the moment, but... I really want to upgrade my computer to Windows 11 because it looks beautiful as an operating system. But fuck me. It's just so bad for gaming at the moment. Like, I'll sit on... Windows 11 loses approximately 5 to 10% performance on Ryzen CPUs at the moment. Did you not know Windows L was a thing? <laughs> I got a lot of little tricks. So, um... Windows L locks your computer instantly. Um, Windows B will put your cursor to the taskbar. 
Um, so you can then use your left and right arrows to select something on your taskbar. That's for if you don't have a mouse, though, so it's not as useful. Um, and my personal favorite one, um, Windows V. So standard on Windows, you do Control C and Control V. That's how you copy and paste. If you do instead of Windows V, it will load up a clipboard of all the stuff you've copied. So if you do Control C three times on three separate items, you can then press Windows V and you'll see all three different items on there. Which, apparently a lot more people don't know that than I realize. And it is so useful for productivity. Like, if I'm sat doing a YouTube thing, sorting out um, timestamps on the YouTube videos, for example, I will just sit there. I'll go through. Um, I'll copy all the timestamps from the description that I've used, and then I'll use those exact timestamps on the next page when I'm sorting the adverts out. And I'll use Control C on all of them and then Windows V, paste them all in. It's such a useful tool, especially at work before. It would be so useful to just copy multiple like bits of information and then just paste them in. And they're all just there, Windows V, down arrow, enter, and it's paste. It's quick as that. I don't have to go and find the data again it's just there. Saved. Brilliant. Oh, F4. <laughs> it is a very sketchy one, and I am not doing it. I'm not going to fall for that. <laughs> Wasting my life away. Windows left and right is very good as well. So, um, if you're... Um, if a window is, say for example, if I'm on my PC and I've loaded up a software and it's on a different window, um, sometimes it's just easier. Windows, left, right, up, down, whichever way you need the window to go. It's so much easier to move the window around like that. Because um, that way, you don't have to try and search for your mouse or shit like that. You'll get more money if you do control or F4. I'm not falling for it. Shut up. <laughs> oh, and another cool one. It, it, it's more a party trick more than anything. So if you've got um, too many windows open on your computer, if you've got like seven windows and they're just getting in the way and you want to close them all down except one window, you can actually shake the taskbar so, you know when you drag a window, if you shake it and just shake your mouse left and right, it will close down every other window except the window you're dragging on. So, you can basically highlight an individual window. I'll do, I'll do a demonstration on stream afterwards. But it is such a useful tool, especially when you've got so much shit open and you're just like, right, I need productivity. Get rid of everything in one swipe. It's brilliant. I can guarantee you Epic has just sat there at his computer trying it. There's some cool little Windows tricks for you. I'm a fucking idiot unlike you. <laughs> That's like a double-edged sword. It's like, I insult myself and compliment someone else. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, cheers for that one, Epic. <laughs> she's on the floor. She's on the floor again. <laughs> Alright, here we go. We're nearly done. Bum, bum, bum. Bum 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 bum. Oh my holy budgie bus. Just like the fall. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> England is my city or kingdom. No, it's not. Oh, thank fuck for that. This event's over. Woohoo!
I'm done. I can go to sleep after this one. I'm finishing the stream. That's it. Done. Right, we'll press OK on that. 20 grand. Thank you very much. And what card do we get? Lotus Exige. Ah, oh, fuck yeah. That's a nice card. I love the Exige. It's so cool. All right, I'll take that. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>